Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this tutorial. As always, I'm Hindo Samuel, and today we are going to do a set of a questionnaire, and it is having all of the four Microsoft Office applications where we find Microsoft Word. There is a question of Excel, there is a question of PowerPoint, there is a question of access and and the questionnaire if you want the questionnaire you can just download it from the link in the description of this video just click in that link then it will direct you to our our server then you can download that questionnaire and then keep practicing with us so our questionnaire is here you can see it is having a question question one which is microsoft word it is having question two which is for excel it is a payroll then question three it is powerpoint then question four is for database so we shall begin with question question one so for question one they are saying load a word processor application and type the text below as it appears so the text below they are talking about is this one here from this heading up to this last paragraph here so they said you type it in our work so what we are going to do we are going to open make click in the start button here after clicking on the start button we are going to open our microsoft office word so that we do that number one for microsoft word so we are supposed to type the other text as it has been given in the question so without wasting time we shall just copy our question that is text the text in the question here that is given then we highlight it after highlighting we right click inside we copy this text then you come and paste it in the answer the answer booklet where we are going to work from so we assume now we have typed our text then we go back to our questionnaire and see what next is required so part b they are saying we center the heading bold and change it to lowercase so they are asking us to center the heading of the text we bold it and then change it to lowercase so we come back to our answer booklet here so they talked of the heading so we are going to highlight the heading remember in the other previous sessions we said you cannot apply an a, a format or you cannot edit the text without highlighting it so you have to first highlight the text so after highlighting our heading then they said we center it so we come now to these alignment tools so we select the center align Tool. so you click in the center tool then you see you see our heading having been put in the center of the page then they also say the, you should bold it so we come to the bolding tool here then we select the bolding tool then after they also said we change it to lowercase remember is it is here typed in uppercase so we are going to change it to lower case so you come to the change case tool here you click on the change case tool then you bring the drop down or options then you select the lower case so after selecting lower case you will see our page i mean our text having been changed or changed to lower case it has been formatted to lower case that is question b we come back to our question uh, questionnaire but see they are saying highlight the first paragraph with color green and write indent it so we are going to apply a highlight color green to this to the first paragraph and then we ready indent it so we come back again to our answer booklet so they talked of the first paragraph so that means we are going to highlight the first paragraph here after highlighting the first paragraph then they talked of highlighting it with color green that means we are going to use the text highlight color tool here so you click on that 
arrow that is next to that tool then you select the color that you have specified the top of green color so you select the green color so you see the background of that text having been changed to green but when the text is blur so that's what we call the highlight color then they also said we should rate indent it so the indent tools are here we have the left indent and the right indent here so that means you are going to highlight the text again after highlighting then you come and click on the right indent tool or the increase indent tool so when you click there you will see the text having extended to the right that's C, part c then you go to part d part d they are saying put three columns put three columns in the second last paragraph for so we are going to put three columns in the second last paragraph so we come to the answer booklet here then the talk of the second last paragraph this is our last paragraph then the second last paragraph is this one here so we highlight that paragraph after highlighting that paragraph then we come to the insert tool so we are looking for a column for a column tool and the column tool will find it in the page layout page layout tab so you are going to click in the page layout tab then you will see the column tool here so you come and click on the column tool then they will bring the option of the number of columns that you want to put in your paragraph so our, our question was three columns so you are going to select three columns here then you'll see our paragraph having been put in three column this is the first column the second column and the other one is the last column the third column so that's how we put columns in the text using the column tool here and this column tool is under the page layout tab then we go back to our our questionnaire we see another question question e i akana e they are saying insert a word out of the word together we can so they are saying we add or we insert a word at so we come back to our questionnaire here our questionnaire then you first click where you want the word add to be let us assume for us we want it at the bottom of our paragraph here the last paragraph so you come and click here then you press enter so that the cursor is at the bottom of your text and is where we want it to put our word at so after clicking there then you come to insert and the word at we find it in the insert the insert tab so you click on the insert tab then you will see those tools that are in the under insert tab then you will see the tool called the word art so you come and click on the word art tool then after clicking there then they will bring a variety of word art type so you can select any word art of your choice so for us we are going to take this one here you select that one then they will bring the text here and then you modify you change that text you remove that text that is already there then you type there the text that they have asked they said you put their text of together 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 we can together we can it is together we can together we can that is our word add so the word art is done there then we come back again to our questionnaire and see what other question that we are going to so question f a kind of f they are saying we insert page number at the bottom of our page so we are going to insert the page number at the bottom of our page we come back to our answer booklet here where we are answering from then you come and select insert and remember the page number in the other previous sessions we said they are the page number we find them in the insert tab so you come and click on the insert tab after clicking on the insert tab then you come and select page number so you click on the page number 
then they will bring options now do you want it on the top you want it on the bottom or in the margins remember our question they are saying you insert it in the bottom or at the bottom so you come and click on the bottom so when you reach on the bottom here then you will see this other option this side so do you want it at, 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 at on the left you want it in the center or on the right for us we can just select this center then you see the page number coming at the bottom of your page so that's how we insert the page number so we come back to our questionnaire and see what next question we are going to then question h they are saying question no we are going to question g question g they are saying format paragraph 3 with font color green so we are going to format paragraph 3 with font color green so we will come to our answer booklet here they talked of paragraph 3 paragraph 3 to font color green so we already have paragraph 1 is here paragraph 2 is here then they talked of paragraph 3 so we come and highlight this paragraph 3 which is having columns highlight it after highlighting it they said we should format it to font color green and remember we said the font color green is in home and it is one is, is this one here so you come and click on this arrow that is next to that tool then you will select the the font color they are talking about so they say the font color green so when you select font color green you will see our text having changed to green color that's what we call the font color then you go to another question they are saying question h they are saying strike through the third paragraph so we are going to strike through our third paragraph so we come to our answer booklet here and the third paragraph is this last paragraph here so you highlight it the last paragraph they are talking about after highlighting that paragraph then you go and click on the strike through tool and if you remember well in the other previous session we said the paragraph the strike through tool is under under the home tab and if you did not watch those tutorials the links are under in this description of this in the description of this very this very video so you can go and watch through them so that you pick these these tools and you understand them and how we use them so they said we are streaking through the last paragraph so you come and click in the strike through tool here so when you click there then you'll see this paragraph having been strict through that's what we call the strike through tool that's the question h then you go to another question which is question i i can i they are saying increase the line spacing of your text to 2.0 2.0 so we come to our our answer booklet here so they are talking of the line spacing of our text so when they are talking of the text that means they they are talking of the whole text from the heading to the last text then after you come and click on the line spacing tool and we said the line spacing tool is under home is in the home tab then you come in the home tab and select the line spacing tool here then when you click there then you, you see the the number of line spacing says so we are going to select 2.0 it's the one that they have, have specified in the question so you select 2.0 so you see the line spacing between the, our text having been increased let's see that number that akana uh, akana j they are saying double underline the word computer everywhere it appears in the text so we are going to underline the word computer everywhere it appears in our text so we are coming back to our answer booklet so doing this thing you can do it in two ways the first one is using the replace tool and then the other simple 
simple one is going on highlight, highlighting every word the way uh, everywhere it is as you are double underlining it but that one is very simple so we shall opt for the other difficult one so that we also learn how to do it so if we are underlining very many text in in our document and we want to select them automatically what you do you come to the replace tool here you come on the find tab after coming on find tab you come and type here the the word computer because we are finding the word computer then after you come on this option here find in so you select in the main document so when you click in the find in the main document then you will see the other the other word word computer having been highlighted then you come and click on the double underlining tool then you you will see it having been underlined that's how we do it in the other hard way and in the simple way we said you just highlight them manually then you click on the word underlined so that is it this question of akana akana j then akana k they are saying insert a page border on your document so when they talk of page border we say the page borders we find them in page layout so you come to our answer booklet then you come to page layout here so the page borders are always in page layout come to page layout then you see a, a page border tool so you come and click on the page border tool then after you come and select the line style you want to put on the border you select it then you come and after selecting the style you want to use then you come and click apply to then you see it being applied on the text that's the way first way of doing it you can do it from the page border which is under page layout page border which is under page layout or you can still do it from home when you come to home then you come on the border tool just like we did in the other in the other second session that we handled the previous days so you come on border tool you come to border and shadings then after you come to page border you select the style then you select it okay so you see the page border having been placed on our page so that's how we insert the page border so we come to another question the the other question they are saying insert a text border on the title so we are going to insert a text border on our title and our title is this one here the title of our work which is this one so they are saying we insert there a text border so we are going to highlight our title after highlighting the title we come to the insert it to the home tab then you come to the border tool here after selecting border tool you come and select border and shadings from the drop down list then you select the style of the border you want to use so i assume you want to use this one here then after before you click ok you come and select where you want to apply they said we apply it on the text border so you come and select text border if they had talked of paragraph that means you would leave there paragraph but they talked of text border that means you are going to select text border then after you just click okay so you see our border having been placed on our heading or our title so that is how we insert the head there the text border then you come back to our question and the last question they are saying save your work in your name in the folder created on the desktop that means before you open all this one that we have opened we are supposed to create a folder on the desktop so that at this time when you are saving just go and save in your folder so when you are saving we shall just come on our as a booklet here then you come on the file tool click on the file tool if there is no file tool here you always find the office button so you can click on this 
fail tool or the other office button for other versions so you click on the fail then you come on save as save as then you come and select desktop because we are going to save it on the desktop and the fact that on the desktop we are not having there any folder that we had created there in our name so we can just right click here and create it directly from here just right click here then you select new then after new just select folder then you can rename it you can rename it using our name can I rename it using our name Eka media so that is our folder and then after you open it you right click on it then you select it you select it open after the folder has opened then you come where we have the file name so this file name we say they said we save it using our name so we are going to still use our name to save it then after just come and click save so our number is now done so we close this one here and when you come and check in our folder here then you will find there our question number one having been saved there so that is microsoft office word number which was number one so we are going to another number which is now for excel so when try to see when we try to see in our questionnaire here question number two they have given us data of employees of a certain company or organization they are showing here they are showing here the employee employee number they are showing here the employee name they are showing here hours they worked hours worked they are also showing the basic pay which was paid to them then down here we have questions for example question before we go to the question there is added information here they are saying add the columns of overtime bonus allowance gross pay nssf pay and net pay so we are going to add these columns in our excel after entering the other data in the table then you can proceed to our questions so the first thing we are going to do is to enter the data here in our table the data that's in the table here we enter it in microsoft excel so what we are going to do is to come and click on the start button after clicking on the start button come and open microsoft excel so after microsoft excel opening it will pop up this one you close it then we are going to enter here the data that are presented in the other in the other table so we are going to type this data here very fast in like seconds then we continue
so our data has been entered here has been entered but they said we should add columns of bonus i mean overtime we are going to add a column for overtime in front here overtime we shall also add column of another column they said you add the column of another column is bonus you add the column of bonus another one is allowance allowance allowances so that column of allowances then another one is another column they say the gross pay gross pay nssf and pay gross pay here gross pay gross pay another one is nssf and ssf another one is pay pay then net pay net pay net pay okay so that is that one so having added these ones here we go back to our question we see what next so i kind of wonder you're saying overtime is hours worked minus 150 then times z 25 so they have even specified here the formula that we are going to use so we come and calculate for overtime so they say the overtime is, uh, is hours has worked minus 150 then into uh, which are into bracket times z 25 and in excel every every cell here you see is having a position and we get the position of this cell by getting the letter in the column heading followed by the the row number for example the position of this cell here where we have one one thousand two hundred the position is d2 because it is in the column of d and then in the row of two the column of this one the position is, I mean, the, this cell here, the position is D4 because it is in the column of D and then in the row of 4. So that's how we get the columns of, the, I mean, the position of the cell. So in, for, in the formula, instead of entering the text, I mean, the figures that are in the cell, we enter the position of the cell. So if they say D, the overtime formula is hours worked so we will say equal sign every formula in excel begin with equal sign we say equal signs and hours worked is this one here which is c c2 so when you click there you will see c2 coming here so you shouldn't ask yourself what about now where is the c2 coming from so you know c2 is the position of this cell so but they said it should be in a bracket. That means after equal signs, we have to open the bracket. Have to open the bracket. Then we say C2, which is hours worked, minus 150. You say minus 150, as it has been specified in the other formula they, they gave. You close the bracket. After you say times, we use a star for times. Times 25. Then after you press enter, so you will see that that answer coming there. We can again calculate the second one. It is still equal sign. We open the bracket. We say hours worked, which is C three minus one fifty. Then you close the bracket. Then we say times twenty five then you press enter so we'll get that answer so this one is having a minus that means this one worked for less than 50 hours so 
once you get the first answer then the rest of the answer you can just enter them automatically by clicking the first answer that you got then you come on the left lower corner of the cell here then when you reach there when the cancer reach there you will see that black cross coming so when you see the black cross coming you hold the left click the button then you drag moving downwards then the rest of the answers will bring themselves auto automatically but for the beginners i would advise that you always go on entering these formulas one by one so that you get used to these formulas not entering the answers automatically so if you are practicing make sure you enter one answer at a time you compute one answer at a time so that you get used to these formulas so we come to bonus bonus they said when you look in our question here bonus they said it is basic pay plus five percent of overtime basic pay plus five percent of overtime so we come here so we say equal signs we said every formula begin with equal sign we say equal signs equal signs so basic pay we are going to put there the position of the basic pay which is this one here which is d2 when you click there then you will see the d2 coming so they are saying it's d2 plus plus what plus five uh, percent of overtime plus five percent of overtime so we we'll say plus plus then you open bracket after plus open bracket here then we say five when they talk of five percent that means it is five divided by 100 then times overtime and overtime we say the it is this one here because we have already computed the for it then after you close bracket so the reason why we put these ones here in bracket we want this one to be multiplied with this one first then after then it should be added to this basic pay then after we just press enter so you will see our bonus having been computed to that then you can come on this corner here then you drag downwards so we will see our answer coming there automatically and according to this question here our question they said nb no overtime is given to those who worked less than 15 hours so how do you know that this one worked less than 15 hours when you see someone with an overtime which is a minus that means he he or she worked less than 150 hours so that means where we have a minus we shall go on putting there a zero where there is a minus we also put there a zero where we have a minus we put a zero where we have a minus we put a zero because they say that those one who, who worked less than 50 they were not given over over time then we go to the column of allowance they said allowance allowance is 25 pass 20 i mean 28.5 of basic pay so it is 28.5 so we shall say equal signs after equal signs we say 28 28.5.5 so when they say this figure percentage that means is that figure out of 100 so if they say 25 i mean 28.5 percent that means it's 28.5 divided by divided by 100 then the times they said it is 28.5 times basic pay and the basic pay is this one here so you can enter there the position of basic pay which is d d d to like that or you just click there then it will come here so after you just press enter so you see the figure or the amount for allowance have been put here so you can just come and click there then you can drag 
so that we enter the rest of the answers automatically but as i, I advised for the beginners if you are you are practicing make sure you always enter these these formulas manually so that you get used to them then the gross pay is not given so but they always in in payroll the gross pay we get it by adding the basic pay plus the additions and the additions includes the overtime bonus and the allowances so you know payroll is divided in some segments you always have what you call the basic pay the basic pay that is very that very amount of money that they give you without other allowances that's what you call the bay the basic pay in payroll then we have what we call additions so when you talk of addition there are these other allowances and other benefits that you are given in addition to the basic pay so those additions we add them to the basic pay to grow to get the gross pay so that means if you are going to get the gross pay here we shall say equal sign after equal signs we say basic pay we add there overtime we add there bonus we add there allowance then we shall press enter then we shall get the gross pay that's the uh, one way of doing it then there is another way of summing where we say equal signs you type the word sum sum then you open the bracket then you put there the first position of the co the column that you are going to add then you put there the two dots and those two dots in excel means two so when they say two they are talking of these two dots then after you put there the last position where you want to stop from adding so you also close the bracket that means we are commanding the excel that it should sum from this position to the other position then you press enter it is sum it's not sum but sun i had i had, I had taped it sun but it's supposed to be sum sum then after you just press enter so you will get our answer here then you can drag and get the rest of the answers auto automatically so that means there are two formulas of adding so you can either use the this first one which is of adding every cell to another cell or you can use this one here of typing equal sign sum open bracket the other position to the other position then you press enter then you get the answer so that's how we get the gross pain then for nssf we come back here to our question and see how we are going to compute nssf for nssf they said nssf is five percent of gross pay so we are going to calculate five percent of gross pay the gross pay is already here so we shall say equal sign equal signs then we say five percent when the stock of five percent is five divided by a hundred divided by a hundred then it times of means times and we said for times we use a star times now the gross pay then after you press enter so you will get our nssf here you can again do it here we say equal signs we say five divided by 100 times the basic pay i mean the gross pay you enter then you get the answer so like that so you can click in the answer here then you come and drag from this corner here so that you get the rest of the answers automa automatically then we come to pay and the formula for pay we come and check in our question here what have they said on the pay they said the pay they said pay is 20 percent of gross pay pay is 20 percent of gross pay so we come to our 
answer here in Excel we are going to compute for the year they said it's 20% so if it is 20% that means it is equal sign we say 20 to divide divide by 100 then times because we said of means times times the gross pay which is this one here then after you press enter so you will get our pay then we can again calculate it here in the second row we say equal sign we say 20 which is the 20 divided by 100 which stands for 20 percent divided by 100 100 times now the basic pay i mean the gross pay you click there the gross pay you enter then you will get the answer so once you have got the answer you click in the answer then you can drag downwards like this so you will get the rest of the answers automatically like that then when you try to when you try to come to the net pay for the net pay it is not given in the question there but it is automatically that one they already know you are supposed to compute it and for the net pay in payroll is always gross pay minus deductions and other de de deductions we find there are the taxes the advance the nssf all those ones they are deductions so the deductions you subtract them from the gross pay to get the net pay so that means we are going to say equal signs we say gross pay on gross gross pay we are going to subtract nssf which is a deduction we subtract min minus pay then you spray you press enter so you see our net pay like that you still calculate this one down here equal sign you say gross pay minus nssf minus pay then you press enter so you get the answer there so once you have got the answer you can click in that answer then you come on this corner you drag and you will get the rest of the answers automatically take it there so now we have filled all the necessary questions so we come back to our questionnaire here and see what was next so we have already computed the nssf pay and also the gross pay now we come to formatting so part g they are saying format the column headings to font color blue and highlight it with green color so we are going to format them to font color blue the column headings so when they talk of the column headings they are talking of these ones here the input number name hours works so those are the column headings so you highlight those column headings highlight the column headings after highlighting the column headings then you come to the you come to the font color they said we format them to font color blue so you are going to select font color blue so you'll see the text having changed to blue then the other option they also said we should do highlight it with green color so you still come and highlight it with green color so we are going to highlight the columns like that the column headings then you come to to the highlight color because they said we highlight it with the green so we select this arrow next to the highlight color then you select the green so we'll see our cells having been highlighted with green but the the headers are blue that is the party or oh, that is akana g then akana h they are saying align the column headings to the angle of 30 so when they talk of aligning to a certain angle just come in our answer booklet here for excel you highlight those column headings because they are the one that we are going to align after highlighting then you will see this this tool here this is the orientation tool you will come in the orientation tool here you click there when you click there then you will see these 
all directions the one you want to use to to change the direction of your text so we have clockwise angle have vertical we have rotate up we have rotate down then we have now cell alignment so for our case we are going to select cell format cell alignment after selecting format alignment then they will bring this dialog box and in this dialog box you will see something like orientation here then after orientation below here you will see zero he said you have degree so that means the degrees that they have given us we are going to put it here so you remove the zero and put there the 30 degrees that they have specified after the 30 degrees then you come and click it okay then you see the cell the the the, the, the headers or the column headers having been aligned to an angle of 30 degrees so the the the, the angle from this text here to the vertical line here uh, mean to the horizontal line here is 30 degrees that's why they said we are aligned to 30 degrees then we come back to our question here and see what next so our question now is done they are saying a kind of i they are saying save your work are using your name and index number in the folder created so we are going to save our excel we come to excel then you come and select it come and select it the file file tool then you come to save as then you come to desktop because our folder is on the desktop select the desktop then they will bring everything that is in on the desktop here then you come and scroll here you scroll until you see our folder our folder is here tracker medias so you come and click on it then you right click and select open after opening you come where there is file name so they said we we save it using our file name so using our name you're going to use our name to save it this is we are putting there our name like that then after after you just come and click save then our file will be saved so even if you come and close somewhere here then when you come and check in our folder here when you come and open in our folder you will find there our excel having been saved there so that's how we that's how we insert or we create that so for our today we have tackled two numbers we have the first number for word and then you also handled the num the other number for excel so in another session we shall also handle that number for powerpoint so thank you very much for attending this session and please if you have not yet subscribed to this channel just subscribe to this channel like the video and if it is very interesting you can even share it to your friend and then also hit that notification bell such that anytime we publish a new tutorial or a new video you can be notified so that you also join it and watch so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen keep practicing and develop your skill i sign out